Welcome back, folks, to Let's Replay Albion. When last we left off, we had solved the problem between the Mahinos and the Iskai, revealed that Kontos was only out for his own self-gain by, uh, turning the shrine into a mine for metal deposits, and killed Kontos, because apparently he thought that he could take on a party of six heavily armed and well-trained warriors. It was a poor gamble on his part, and he was wearing a chain that improved his luck and even then his luck had run out. We want to head straight back to, um, we want to head straight back to Belovano right now and do a lot of selling. We need to clear out the uh, inventories of uh, two characters in particular, but we most certainly also just want to get rid of everything that we're holding on to that is entirely worthless. We want to get rid of all the gems, we want to get rid of uh, all of the Krondir meat and try, and the one egg spheres, and just anything else that we're not using. Using. We might even get rid of the crystal daggers, because really, there's not much reason to be holding on to them right now. They really haven't been that effective, and we haven't used any of their um, spells that are within them. We are quite uh, well equipped after all, and we really just don't need them right now. And so we're going to do a little bit of inventory management, and then a small amount of uh, travelling to a large amount of plot dump. As there is a large, large amount of plot dump coming, and we need to be quite quick here if we're going to uh, get down to where the uh, stores are in Belovano before they all start shutting. We could of course just rest, but it's probably better that we uh, sort it out immediately. It's good though that we managed to solve everything in Belovano and prevented the assassination. All good news indeed. Alright, we pretty much know where the uh, general store is and that's where we want to go. It's over here. There we go, we have a lot of things that we want to sell. Alright, first we'll get rid of uh, all of these um, spheres that we're holding on to. You're not holding on to any you're holding on to quite a few. We also need to sort out these uh, inventories most certainly because uh, we want to get rid of a lot of things that are entirely superfluous. Let's see what else we can get rid of. You have none. You have quite a lot of things including some uh, crondim meat and try. Also these uh, red swords are just really taking up inventory space. We might want to get rid of them, but not right now nothing in there to get rid of. In the cell window, however, there's a lot of stuff we want to get rid of. We want to get rid of most of these gems, but first we want to get rid of all of these uh, Krondir meat and try. We also want to get rid of this large dagger, we want to get rid of um, anything that's really not that valuable for us to hold on to. Alright, are you carrying anything? You're carrying ten of that. And while we're at it, we can also get rid of pretty much all these torches, we don't need torches at all. May have even sold them to the wrong window, but we still don't need them. And we don't need this light staff either. There we go. We also don't need this ring. That's entirely superfluous now. And we also don't need any other pieces of jewellery that we happen to be carrying. Including this silver torque here. I don't know who can equip that. I think it's everyone. But we still don't need it. So that's nine gold and... Uh, one more inventory space cleared up. The main reason, I don't even want to keep that, we're just going to throw that away. But um, the main reason we're clearing up um, inventory space is because we need to. The game is about to uh, dump a lot of characters inventories on us and we most certainly uh, don't want to uh, have anything go wrong there. Alright, let's go here. Anything else here? We could sell this, I suppose. I think, however, we only need to take the really important plot items from them, but it's still a good idea just to clear out inventory space and uh, make sure everything is in tip-top condition. Also, still not sure what I want to do about that Shadow Sword just yet. Just yet. I think we've pretty much done all we need to here. Let's go now to the inn and do what we need to do. We'll head over here and around and talk to Frill. It's a good idea to talk to Frill as soon as you can. Hello! Desarima, friends. What's the situation between the Mahinos and Iskai? Good news. The inhabitants of Kurnos now understand that they were misled by Kontos. They didn't like it when uh, they had to admit that they'd been fooled like little children. In any case, we believe that the tribes can start to rebuild a healthy relationship. 
That is good news. Now nothing stands in the way of a small journey by sea. Shall we leave immediately? Yes, why not? Good, then please follow me. Tom, let me say something before you continue. After all the excitement, Malthus and I would like to have some time together. I would like to ask you and the others to go on without us for a while. Once we have rested, we will gladly join you for more adventures. We'll be in Matavan in Shramalanar if you're looking for us. I understand. Now I wish you and Malthus a beautiful time in Shramalanar. We'll certainly see each other again soon. Best wishes. Best wishes. Until then, Tom. Oh yes, if you need any of our equipment, please feel free to take it. Syra and Malthus offer their equipment. You can take items off them. The only things you really need to take, though, are the plot important items. They'll pretty much keep everything else. Do you want to leave the rest of the items? Yes. And we want to leave the rest of those items, too. We'll be back for those. Syra and Malthus say goodbye. The others follow Frill to a small ship, which immediately sets out to sea. Also, there is a big hole in our um, party. It will be filled eventually. Off we go! The ship has a very small crew of unusually quiet Iskai who seem to know Frill well. <laughs> Let's go! Frill assumes navigation of the boat, and so begins a several day voyage to the south. Apparently backwards. They're that good at piloting the boat. Finally, a curtain of mist comes into view on the horizon. The small ship rapidly approaches it. And through the smoke and mist. A little island looms out of the fog. A place of incredible beauty is revealed to Tom and his companions. The island is subdivided by canals and covered with majestic trees. Elegant bridges span the landscape. Small buildings merge into the surroundings, and a large house can be seen in the background. A peaceful, sheltered atmosphere lies over the place. Frill leaves the boat, and the others follow him. The little ship immediately sails off, and Frill turns to his guests. Hello. Welcome to the island of the Gigantos, or the Enlightened Ones. You are about to see what not many have ever seen. Follow me to our house, where you will meet someone you already know. The companions follow Frill without speaking, and are absorbed in their surroundings. It indeed is very beautiful. Very beautiful and very old. Let's go. He certainly knows his way. And indeed, there is someone here that we have already met. From a little while ago, actually. Quite a while ago by now. It is a long way, and we are going to be exploring this place quite thoroughly eventually. Eventually. Hello! We may talk to you at some point too! Up the stairs, along the path. There's a lot of paths here. Here we are! Hello! Tom is surprised to see Nemos, whom he had known to be the chief of the Druids of Grattagel, standing before him. Apparently, he also belongs to the secret society who live on this island. Welcome, Tom Driscoll, and your companions. Toggy Din, Nemos. Wonderful to see you again, even if, I must confess, the circumstances surprised me a little. That is understandable. We have a lot to tell you. Prepare for imminent plot dump. Just as you, Tom Driscoll, have much to tell us. Now please follow me into the house. We can exchange a lot of information there. Not outside, of course. Inside! Tom and his companions have barely gotten used to the elegant architecture of the house when they reach a kind of meeting room. A small meeting of humans and Iskai await them. Hello! Greetings again, Tom Driscoll. I mean, we literally just said hello. Now, before we tell you about this place, let me introduce the people who belong to our gathering. In addition to Sebai Giz Frill, whom you already know from Jirana, they include uh, Dranag, scholar of magic and master of the art of creating magic objects. Welcome to the Enlightened Ones. Sebai Dre Burr, master of healing. Disarema Tom Driscoll. Urkith, scholar of sagas and stories from olden times. Greetings, visitors. And finally, Harriet, our youngest member. She hears the voice of Anim Ebona. Greetings, Tom Driscoll and Rainer Hofstedt. I will try to explain where you are and what we want from you, Tom. The need for brevity will make my words seem immodest. 
We are a group of people who call themselves Gikantos, or Enlightened Ones. The very name of our organization, a mixture of an Iskai and a human expression, indicates that our organization was founded a long time ago by humans and Iskai. The members of our group have a deeper knowledge of the structure of this world than ordinary scholars. Whenever an extraordinary person achieves a certain level of knowledge, we reveal our secrets to them, making them one of the Enlightened Ones, the Shikantos. Our society began when humans migrated to Albion. The great Kantos, leader of the humans, founded our group almost 2,000 years ago, together with the two greatest scholars of the Iskai. They shared the knowledge of the power which made the human beings voyage there possible. It is also a source of the magic on this world. They, and we as their heirs, know of the existence of Anim Ebona, the entity of this world. Please continue. What's the significance of Anim Ebona? Anim Ebona is the sum of all life on this world, and yet she has her own mind and goals. Traces of her essence are found in many religions on Albion, be it the goddess of the Iskai or the Danu of the humans. It was she who spoke with Kantos and led the humans here through the land of the fog. Excuse me, but there will be time enough later for you to satisfy your thirst for knowledge, Honored Reyna. Interesting that they refer to him as Honored Reyna. For now, we only need to know that with the knowledge of this world, we also have assumed a certain responsibility. Since Phil announced your arrival in Jirinar to our group, we have observed you and conducted inquiries. You know where the Toronto, our great spaceship, is located? We do indeed. Know where the gigantic metal object has landed, Tom Driscoll, and even though it has landed in the Great Desert, it concerns us. The ship is the embodiment of all reasons why Kantos led his people from, uh... Anim Enkena, uncounted years ago. Now the Helromnia have caught up with us, or at least it seems so. I don't completely understand what you mean, Mimos. Haven't the inhabitants of Albion discovered the Toronto yet? According to our knowledge, no. But we are not all knowing, Tom Driscoll. Up to now, your actions have proven you to be a trustworthy man. Therefore, we would like you to establish contact between our people and yours. We would like to know the goals of the Hell Romia on our world. Gladly. By now a research station should be set up. I'm sure my people will want to document everything, and they will also pose a huge number of questions. A group of the best scholars of this world is naturally an ideal information source. Would you, would you be so kind as to help us continue our journey to the Toronto's landing place? Thank you for your good intentions, Tom Driscoll. As a sign of our trust, I would like to give you this little stone. It serves as a sign of great recognition of our society, and it will also help protect you against misfortune. Nemos places a small stone on Tom's chest. It sticks to his skin tightly. It is a very powerful stone. Your giant ship is located in the hot lands of the Umajo, far to the northwest of here. In order to make the trip there as fast as possible, and assuming you agree, we would like you to take Harriet with you as a companion. As a member of our group, she has access to perhaps the greatest magic Anim Ebona makes available to us. The caves of the goddess allow fast transportation, just as when Anim Ebona brought Kanto and his people here. Magic was used to transport humans from one world to another. It's getting to the point where nothing surprises me anymore. Patience, Reyna. Nemos, we gladly accept your offer. Harriet, welcome to our little group. It will certainly be an interesting trip, Tom Driscoll. And indeed, Harriet becomes a member of the Companions. Although we intend to make contact with Helrom here soon, we must still make time for some reflection and discussion. I would like that very much. I'd like to learn some more. We will now return to our daily work, but everyone here will be glad to answer your questions, Tom. And particularly you, Reyna. Look around the house and get strength for the journey perhaps by a little meditation surrounded by nature. It has been particularly blessed by the entity. Her forces will be strongest there. If no one has any objections, I now conclude the meeting. The meeting has now been concluded. No one objects, and the group slowly breaks up. There is a lot to talk about here, and Harriet to talk too. What can I do for you, Tom? Would you mind telling me a little about your life? Well, my life was and is governed entirely by a Nim Ebona, the entity even if it hasn't always made me happy. Sometimes I have visions and receive unclear messages from the Entity. In the small village where I grew up, I was an outsider because the people were afraid of my trans states. 
When I was 14, I ran away from home and met Frill, who was traveling in Belovano. He recognized my special talents and brought me into this community of the Shikantos. What can you say about uh, the entity? She views things as living beings as individuals which do not belong to an order or higher state of being. You know, everything has its own magic, its own ends. Therefore, a man does not become a man because he is externally appears as a man, but he simply is a man. Therefore, we call the counterpart of the entity, her brother, Anim Enkna, the Ontic, because he classifies everything and brings order to that which he sees as chaos, but it is really nothing more than the variety of all ends. To explain it simply, a man who feels like an Iskai is an Iskai. Anim, uh, this word is a little difficult, Anim Enkna would never understand this. For him, this Iskai would be a man, because he looks like one. What can you say about uh, the ends? I will try to make this clear to you. That which brings you to speak of I, and thus to mean something which differentiates you from others, is the ends. But the ends is more than that. The ends is everything you are. If you try to describe it in words, you will fail, because words are fixed concepts for you. They don't flow. Perhaps you should ask our healer. Indeed, there is a lot of stuff to talk about. Let's talk about Anim Ebana. Anim Ebana flow means flow of souls. She is the daughter of the unknown god. We enlightened ones also call her Entity. She is our creator and Ur mother. Together with her younger brother Anim Enkna, that means uh, bridal of souls. I think that's uh, Anim Enkna. Yeah, I think that's how it's said. It's going to be a while, and that one's not going to be mentioned as much as Anim Ebana. She created the heaven and the earth, the animals and the plants. Up to now, we thought she created Albion by herself without her brother. And now you have come here, so Anim Enkna must have also participated in the creation of Albion. That is very frightening to us. For where should we turn when Anim Enkna's spirit has crushed Albion as well? They don't like this person. Anim Enkna is the younger brother of Anim Ebana. He is the ruler of your world, for he is the order the consistent, the logical. We call it the bridal. He created everything together with his sister. Only in the case of men, Anim Ebana wanted to create her own people, the Celts. The Anim Enkna was jealous of the people she created, and so he created his own people, the Helromia. And who are the Helromia? There is no doubt that they are very clever people. Some of them even succeeded with their uh, casual logic to recognize that Anim Enkna is not the only son of the unknown god. They have great they have great singers and thinkers, Homer and Aristotle, but their flaws allowed them to get stronger than us. They developed writing, as did we, but their writing soon began to no longer uh, just mean what it said. For them, the writing was what it said, and their words were what they meant. The flow of the language froze, and they began to stack individual concepts one onto another like stones. Their language lost its spirit. They were still very clever but without spirit. They built the tower of their words higher and higher, and converted everything magical which they feared into dead material, and filled it with new, spiritless life. But they completely control this undead material. There's a lot to mention. What about Aristotle? He built the tower of words. Where Ulysses laid the foundation, Aristotle devised the means to build the tower to great heights. He was a great thinker, there is no doubt about that. But he only used the goals of Anim Enkna. The Helromia value him as the founder of logic, and for them, that is the highest thing. But even though their logic, even through their logic rather, the Helromia have still not been able to understand the essence of magic. They may be stronger than the Celts, but they are still far from being everything. There's still a lot to talk about, the unknown god. It is, it's typical that you, a Helromia, would ask about that. It is unknown, therefore, there is nothing more to say about him. Fair enough. What about uh, Homer? Canto, who travelled far through the lands of uh, Helromia, told us of the songs of Homer, of the War of the Iliad, where Achilles and uh, Patroclus fell, and of the travels of Ulysses, who was the first to win against the magic of uh, Anim Ebana by freezing words and using them for his purposes. He was the first prince of Anem Enkna. Of... It's interesting that um, all of these legends are sort of mixing up. The cunning Ulysses. A very interesting figure, even if we don't have much sympathy for him. His cleverness consisted of clinging to the magic of Anim Ebana and then betraying it for his own purposes. As such, he was a great example of Bathric. 
consider the one-eyed giant, uh, Polythemus. Ulysses saved himself by changing his name, thus using it as a tool for his purposes. He only imitated the magic which creates a name, for his name was no longer the expression of magic, but the expression of the purpose which he sought to accomplish. And this is probably one of the main differences between the Celt and the Helromia. Urkith is particularly brilliant in this area. You should ask her about it. There's more to mention, like Albion. That is the name of this world. Albion means white land. We always thought this was the land of Anim Ebona, but maybe Anim Nemka was also right when he answered her. There's still more to mention. Answer! It would be best if our bard sings that for you. She recently composed a wonderful song which tells our history since the beginning of time. That is a long time! Let's uh, talk about the bard. Our bard, uh, Myri, is a treasure of, for our order. You really should listen to her. Well, where is she? Let's talk about the Celts. The three greatest heroes of the Celts, the people of Anim Ebona. Oh, this is going to be tricky. Were Versingetorix? Catuvenon. Uh, Catuvenland. Uh, that's going to be tricky. Catuvelaunus and Canto the Wise. They fought against the Helromia, Sather, and his son, Bathric. Bathric? He was the son of Sather, but much more clever than the latter, because he did not conquer the Celts through war, in which they were difficult to beat. Rather, he enticed them by preaching the unknown god to them. Unfortunately, this was very enticing for many of the Celts. They did not recognize that by preaching the unknown god, Bathric gave him a name, as is the nature of the Helromia. Canto discovered his true nature, and at the same time, saw that the earth was lost to the Helromia. He was the last faithful one to... He was the... He were the last faithful ones to Albion, a place where the Helromia did not yet have access. He went with, probably, is more accurate there. Their tower of words was not yet high enough. Now it appears to be. For they indeed have... Whoa, there's a lot of stuff here. Let's talk about this person. He was the Celtic's greatest warrior and a talented leader. He fell in the battle against Sather. Let's talk about Sather. He was the greatest warrior of the Helromia and a great leader. He was the first to bring dead material against the Celts, and he had great success converting even his armies into dead material. Dead material which consists of living soldiers. But he lost his life by his own weapon, Brotto, after he had killed Catuvelanus and uh, Versingetorix. And there we'll talk about Vercingetorix. He was the brother of, um, this word again. Why is this word here all the time? He was the brother of the, uh, Catuvenalus, and was the first to form battle against the Sather. Let's talk about, uh, Broto. Broto means sting. He was the sting of Sather, and at the same time his fate. There is an old saying that the Helromia will be destroyed by their own weapons someday. Ominous foreshadowing! but I prefer to believe that they will be robbed of their superiority through their weapons. It goes against the spirit of Anim Ebona for Anim Anka to disappear completely, for the river exists only when there is a mountain and a valley. Indeed. Let's talk about magic. Since magic has no words, it is difficult to explain. Imagine that you are with friends, and all of you have had a vivid concept of an event. This event will happen when you have the right access to Anim Ebona. For Helromia, it is very difficult to grasp. But who knows? Perhaps Dranag, our magic teacher, can help you. Have him explain to you how precisely how our transport caves work. Let's talk about those transport caves. The caves are power centers, blessed by the entity. There, she makes it possible for the traveler to reach his destination without having to actually travel the path in between. As long as I and the amulet of the goddess are with you, you can travel to the remotest corners of this world in a very short time, aka fast travel. Let's talk about the enlightened ones. We are an order of beings who have reached a certain degree of understanding into the thoughts of Anim Ebona. We are no longer human or Iskai, though we used to be one of the two. We are only the enlightened ones. Our ends are enlightened. However, we are not a solid group, but are only loosely assembled here. For outsiders, this may appear to be a little chaotic. However, in reality, our ends lead us where we are needed. We also recognize each other by our ends. Let's talk about Kanto. He led the Celts to Albion after he discovered the true nature of Bathric. And indeed, we have talked about everything. Thank you for the conversation. See you, Tom. One last thing we're going to do this video is we're going to swap a lot of equipment around because uh, we can't actually remove this from um, Harriet. This amulet is a sign of my association with the Shikantos. 
I will not give it away. Indeed she won't. We want to uh, swap over all of the items that Reyna has here to Harriet for no particular reason, aka I'm heavily foreshadowing that we are very soon going to lose Reyna from the party. We're just gonna switch everything over and we now have a protection amulet that we have no real purpose uh, for right now. We could I suppose give it to Thunag, but Thunag is quite uh, happy with that strength amulet. I'm just going to move everything over here. It's not going to hurt to do so. And then we'll have a look at Harriet's um, stat line. I think it's actually really, really good. I think it's really good indeed. All right. Let's just uh, switch all this over. Nearly done. And we might as well pass over all of the uh, gold as well. And all of the uh, rations. That said, we do need to pass over some of the rations that Tom has to everyone else. And can she carry all of this? That is quite a good question. The answer is yes, yes she can. Harriet is a 26-year-old Shikantos Enlightened One who is level 10 and has 40 training points. She has uh, 35 out of 50 strength, 55 out of 99 intelligence, 33 out of 60 dexterity, 42 out of 50 speed, 30 out of 55 stamina, 20 out of 25 luck, and uh, 28 out of 55 magic resistance, and 75 out of 99 magic talent. As a point, this provides 8 protection, so it is certainly worth her holding on to it. She has uh, 17 out of 40 close range combat, 29 out of 40 long range combat, 0 out of 3 critical hit, and 10 out of 40 lock picking. The reason why she's better than Reyna is because she has magic. And that magic is indeed very, very useful indeed. We could actually have her use the um, the crystal throwing axe. And I'm sort of tempted to make her do that just to uh, get rid of some of the uh, ammunition requirement. But there is a better item that we will get very soon. There we go. We'll just uh, pass all these items over. And that's still not very bad on terms of her protection stat, the uh, 27 there. She does have magic, quite good magic too. Uh, map view, healing, quick withdrawal, and uh, recuperation. We're going to get a lot more as time goes on, and we will be able to return here. An interesting point to mention is at this point, after we've talked to everyone here, the game is going to heavily, and I mean heavily, open up and we will finally be able to uh, switch people out of the party relatively freely. There are a few caveats though. We need to keep Thunag around for a little while longer. We can no longer, um, we can't at all actually, uh, switch out Harriet. So uh, we're always gonna have these two people, Tom and Harriet. And uh, we're always gonna have Thunag at least for now. After we've sorted out a particular event, we can then get rid of Thunag if we choose to, but once we do, he goes forever. And soon we'll be able to get rid of Drur if we so choose. We're probably going to go and get um, Syrah and Melthus back, because let's be honest, why wouldn't you? But the rest of the party in the long run is um, something that's very uh, variable, and I'm going to uh, ask for your suggestions. Do we keep Thunag along, or when we can get rid of him, do we get rid of him? Do we keep Drur, or do we switch out Drur for Siobhan? We're certainly going to uh, keep um, we're certainly going to keep um, Syrah and Melthus, and Reyna's going to go to leave two slots for that. So at the moment, the main decision is: do we switch out Drur for Siobhan, and do we switch out Thunag later for either Drur or the other companion that we'll get later? And I'll see what you guys think about it. I'm pretty flexible either way. But for now, we must keep Thunag with us. So, I'll catch you next time, folks. For when we come back, we're going to talk more to the people here and do a bit of exploring and eventually say goodbye to Reyna. It has been a long time, Reyna, but your replacement has arrived and is substantially better than you in nearly every single way. So, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.